Good. Um, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and public meeting on Wednesday, October 20th, uh, 2021. Uh, my name is Jane Wald, and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted by remote means only. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. You can open the town's homepage on an internet browser, navigate to the town calendar at the bottom of that page, click on the historical commission meeting link. Zoom and telephone connections and the meeting agenda can be found um, in that way. No in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately uh, access the proceedings in real time via technological means, uh, as well as uh, through meeting recordings. So I'll now take attendance by roll call and board members, please uh, just signal your presence uh, as, we, as we pass your name. Uh, Patricia Alls. Present. Catherine Davis. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Becky Lockwood. Present. Janet Marquardt. I saw your lips move. Dude, I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Read my lips. <laughs> uh, Hattie Startup. Present. And Jane Wald, I'm present too. Um, let's see. Uh, for members of the public, opportunity for public comment will be provided uh, at an appropriate time during the public hearing and then at a general public comment period uh, toward the end of the agenda. Uh, please be aware that the commission can take note of comments but um, will not necessarily be able to respond to them during the public comment period. Um, we can talk a little bit about that procedure when we get there. Uh, the main thing is uh, for members of the public just to identify themselves uh, by name and um, residence. Let's see. Um, then, um, now I think we're ready for the public hearing. So in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 13, demolition delay of the Amherst zoning bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demo demolition application request. And that is for 1089 North Pleasant Street. The North Amherst Community Farm is the applicant. And the request is for the complete uh, destruction of a circa 1850 timber framed wooden barn. Um, this application and supporting materials uh, are available at the Document Center on the town website. So the public hearing um, is now open and let me take just a moment to um, explain the goals and procedure for the public hearing. So I hope you'll bear with me for another couple of minutes. Um, section 13 of this town's zoning bylaw governing demolition delay for structures of historical or architectural significance states that as a matter of public policy, the economic, cultural, and aesthetic standing of the town of Amherst can best be maintained and enhanced by due regard for the historical and architectural heritage of the town, by striving to discourage the destruction of such cultural assets, the protection, enhancement, perpetuation, and use of structures of historical and architectural significance located within the town of Amherst is a public necessity and is required in the interest of the prosperity, civic pride, and general welfare of the people. Uh, so under Massachusetts general laws in the town of Amherst zoning bylaw, the Amherst Historical Commission is 
responsible for an, enacting the purposes and procedures of this policy. So what will happen now is uh, that we'll ask for um, any comments from the applicant in addition to the application they've already submitted and, uh, and the um, supporting materials uh, provided with that. Um, uh, ben Brager, our, our town staff liaison, uh, if he has any other information, he can um, present that. And then, then we can have some question and answer between commission members and the applicant. Um, there will then be an opportunity for public comment and then after some final comments or any um, final questions from commission, uh, from, uh, from the commissioners or the staff person, then we'll, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Um, and then the commission will go ahead and, and um, deliberate on uh, its, uh, how it finds uh, the significance of the building and what uh, demolition act actions it would like to permit or prohibit. Um, at that point, there'll be no other uh, public comment um, unless commissioners ask for specific information. So that's enough. Um, so let me invite um, uh, anyone from the North Amherst Community Farm uh, to um, provide any other comments or information that you'd like at this time. So Bruce, I see that you are, you're here with us. And Barbara Partee and Dave Tepfer. Does, does any one of the three of you wish to add add comment on the application? Yes, uh, I think I will be the spokesman for the group. I think uh, David uh, Tepfer and Barbara Parti may also um, either following me or perhaps in answer to specific questions. I'm looking at the, the, the uh, panelists, uh, the, the participant list and, and I'm I think I'm not seeing anybody other than the commission and the uh, the three of us from the North Amherst Community Farm or Simple Gifts. Um, if I'm correct in that, then it uh, it probably behooves me not to say very much because, of course, um, we've spent a good deal of your time um, uh, a month ago. Um, the only thing that I'll say. Um, really, I think is what is kind of mentioned in the, in the piece, but that is that the, uh, so again, yes, we are uh, asking for the complete destruction of the barn, but, but not for the complete destruction of the components from which it's made. So we, we are intending to take the barn down um, and, to, and to salvage. And, and I should say that that idea uh, that, that, uh, that, that, that we would do this and also that we would have that we have a specific um, place on the farm that we can um, direct the salvage material uh, to a to a very uh, useful and, uh, and more uh, currently appropriate uh, uh, constructed building was a suggestion that grew out of our past meeting so uh, we we do acknowledge the uh, the creative support that that you all made, um, and uh, and we thank you for that. <laughs> but I think uh, unless David and and Barbara, if you have anything to add, I I would say that our presentation rests with this, with the written submission, and that we would um, uh, pass to questions from you, um, and and uh, leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um... Ben, is there uh, anything else you'd like to add? Um, not, not at this time. I think Bruce is correct that a lot of uh, this was discussed at the July 13th meeting and that um, the materials submitted um, kind of reflect the 
that discussion and the assessment report was provided um, as well as historic pictures. Um, I will say one thing that's come to light and I, maybe this was discussed on July 13th, but uh, it was lost on me a little bit is that there is no uh, macris entry for the barn at um, North Amherst Community Farm, uh, nor the farmhouse for that matter. So I think that might be uh, something important to discuss is just entering uh, the barn into the state cult uh, historic and cultural inventory before it, uh, if it is demolished uh, or either way, really. Um, so but the, form, that's something... the form B doesn't do that? Uh, that that uh, yeah, that is the, the form B is entered into uh, the state's uh, Mass Historical Commission's website called Macris. So I yeah. has yeah. Well, we have completed a form B for the farmhouse, and uh, and and it's possible that that whole business that the Mass Historic Commission haven't uh, followed up on their uh, their piece of uh, work, which I've been uh, reminding Nate and. Yeah, maybe not you, but you know, for for three years now, I've been saying we were supposed they were supposed we were supposed to hear uh, this from them, and we never have. So um, that's uh, the house, not the barn, right? Correct. Yeah, is there a form B on the barn itself? I don't believe so. We did a a, a report on it that in with the, that uh, Greg Farmer. Uh, helped us put together in association with the form b but it's not a uh, i don't think we have a specific form b for the for the farm for the barn it's, it's it's not as easy to know that we, we found it much more difficult to to find historical data specifically related to the barn there was quite a lot related to the house but the barn was not specifically mentioned uh in uh, in pretty much any of that um uh, that material that surfaced Many of those, uh, many of the Form B entries for properties in in Amherst um, include information about outbuildings. Uh, so um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's pos It might be possible just to amend the Form B that you sent in, uh, rather than creating a, a separate entry for the barn, especially if the barn is not going to be standing in its current form. Yes, that seems like a good, uh, I mean, that appeals to me uh, logically, but I'm not connected with protocols and things uh, as much as uh, you all are and, and Ben, I think. So I'll be guided, but that sounds, sounds like a logical um, uh, path to pursue to me. Okay. Maybe add a photo. If there isn't one, uh, we have a bunch of photos that we submitted with the uh, the demolition delay permit application. I mean, on the form B, with we must have house photos attached to the form B. Attached I suppose so. It's it's, it's 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 a very long time ago. It's like five years ago that we did this, uh, uh, and um, I'm sure we. Oh yes, of course, that's right. Uh, Greg took copious photos inside and out. Um, and I assume that I they were. If you amend it, you could add maybe just a photo of the barn. Yeah, we could, we could, we could add a lot more than one. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so there are there um, new comments or questions from commission members on the demolition permit request? Oh. Just Pat. Just the clarification from our last meeting that the per, the, the uh, materials from the current standing barn will be removed in such a way as to preserve them to make the new structure on a different location on the farm. And, and just the, to confirm that because that is important uh, that those materials be preserved and repurposed as you've described. Yes, yes, it's very much uh, the intent. Um, I've thought a lot about how that happens. This is not going to be easy for us because uh, we want to do it carefully, but we don't want to, uh, and I've had to try and put together a, 
a guesstimate of what it would cost to take the bone down uh, in a way that preserved those materials that we're after. And um, because I have to make an application to the CPA, uh, and so it's, it's a bit of a guess, but absolutely the notion is that, that uh, the volunteer slice of our, our farm community will be taking the materials as they are uh, you know, taken down from the barn, the, the, the structural beams, uh, the, the structural timbers, I should say, and the siding boards, it, it, it seems that the roof um, is, 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 we don't have to be so careful with, it's, it's just uh, logs and, uh, and, 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 and metal and so forth. So that metal will be recycled, but the, the valuable material seems to be the, the siding boards, and the uh, structural timbers that's the high value material and certainly that we are intending to uh, to take down dismantle and uh, and stack stick a stack uh, and then cover and we'll in a way that we can uh, evaluate what we have so it won't be a, i don't think it'll be one big pile uh, because we have to be able to look at it and so forth so yes it's it'll be uh, stacked and, uh, and and looked at the uh, the siding material. I had a fairly long conversation with Kathleen Carroll, who's a Nabata, who, who's engaged us uh, with some concern for the barn, but she understands uh, uh, what we're trying to do, and and is, I think now supportive. I expected to see her here this evening, and maybe she'll join. But uh, um, we thought that the uh, the uh, the siding material. Uh, from her point of view, could be very nicely deployed uh, on the the barn that is being retained, the the, the newer and far more useful uh, green barn, and uh, we could preserve the 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 uh, the look <laughs> of the farm from that uh, kind of uh, aspect by taking the boards off the farm and applying them to that long facade of the green barn. I I don't know whether I mentioned that to you, Dave, or not in that. No, but that was what uh, Kath, Kathleen seemed to think was a very good idea from her point of view. So anyway, I would yes. just yeah. add very, very quickly of all the, I don't know, many, many, many abutters we have, Kathleen Carroll has the best view of the barn of absolutely anybody who abuts us. <laughs> her back deck has a perfect shot through the trees and it's close to the barn. So. She sees it more than absolutely anybody. <laughs> she is. She is actually on this call. Um, her name appears as an, as a attendee. Oh, really? I'm not seeing her. Uh, okay. Um, okay. If um, oh, if there oh, are no oh, other. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Sorry, I'm not looking. Um, I'll ask for any other questions from commission members, comments. Then um, I'll, uh, let's see. This then would be a, a time to invite comment from the members of the public, if anyone wishes to be recognized. Jay, might I say something briefly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. um, when I was looking to see who was attending, I didn't see, because it got covered over the dialogue box, I didn't see the attendees. So I was assuming there were no attendees, but I was wrong because there's six or seven. So it may be that uh, the uh, attendees know nothing about what we're talking about because I didn't make the presentation in ignorance of their presence. So let's find out, but just uh, bear in mind that, uh, that some of the people attending may not know uh, uh, that we are intending and how we're intending to, um, uh, what we're intending to do here. In that case, I think I might just repeat for those individuals that uh, there is a link um, on the town calendar for today to, to this meeting, the historical commission meeting. And by following uh, the links and navigation there, uh, individuals can, uh, they can access the demolition permit request and all those wonderful supporting materials at, um, uh, on, uh, on the town website in its uh, resources section. 
Um, but Bruce, if you just, if you want to give like a two or three sentence recap of what you, what you're intending to do, then, then I'll go back to um, inviting comment from members of the public. Let me say uh, that the intent is to uh, deconstruct the barn uh, carefully, but it, it's essentially demolition. So we are asking for a demolition permit. Um, the reason is that whereas the farmhouse has been very useful as a building and it is pretty good condition and we've successfully put a lot of effort into renovating and restoring that, the barn is completely different in that it is in pretty terrible condition and that there's no um, uh, functional use that we can think of and we've tried very hard for a number of years. Um, so briefly th th that it is different from the barn, uh, from the farmhouse in that respect. However, it's been painful for us to imagine that we should take down the historic uh, portion of, of the farm, uh, farmstead. So we've uh, committed to um, taking it down carefully, salvaging the uh, key materials, as I've mentioned, and specifically, and I'll end on this, um, uh, uh, using those materials to construct uh, a, pit, a pavilion uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a central location on the farm, which will be far more useful to us and to everybody. And, uh, and so the barn will live on as a, as a timber framed structure, which the farm community I hope will organize to build in a, in a rather celebratory way. Um, it will live on, uh, not so large, but the usable salvaged uh, materials will find their way to another structure on the barn. So that's my, my brief summary of, uh, of the, what we've submitted. Okay. Th thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Um, so again, I'll, I'll invite members of the public uh, to make any comments or, that they would like to about this particular request. And I am seeing no hands. Just, uh, just uh, uh, members of the public can hit the raise hand button. It looks oh, like okay. Have... I do see Kathleen Carroll's hand. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, Kathleen Carroll, 11 Fisher Street. And I am the one who, as Dave says, um, I view the uh, barn 24 seven. So I've grown quite attached to the barn. <laughs> um, it's right uh, straight on view from my uh, deck. Um, anyways, I came late to this discussion, but I've caught up quickly. I've talked with uh, Bruce at length, and I had also done a little bit of research with uh, Preservation Massachusetts um, before I knew that the farm had a plan for the new pavilion, which I totally think is a really great idea. Um, but I would just like to chime in and advocate for, and of course, uh, purely selfish on my part, and I'm going to admit that right off, um, that some of the wood be um, uh, used as a facade for the, the green barn that is right behind the 1850 barn. I think not only would it, um, be in, uh, keep the character of the little uh, farm co compound that is there. Um, uh, I, I, I just would like to see that. And of course, it would um, be nice for me to look at off my deck. <laughs> so I'm being totally upfront about that. So I would just like to advocate and support uh, Bruce's um, suggestion that he uh, submitted. And I know that's extra work for uh, Dave and Jeremy. Um, and I would like to jump in and help to volunteer to help with that. Okay, thank, thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. Um, are there any other uh, members of the public who would like to comment? All right, then, um, do I, it, would someone like to make a motion to close the public hearing? Just about to do that. I move we close the public hearing. 
there a second? A second. second. Thank you. Um, uh, all in favor? We can just all raise hands if you. Okay, that's uh, seven. That's unanimous. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I'm going to make a suggestion that um, rather than going through the 11 criteria that we for historic significance that we usually do, I'm going to suggest one of three motions and um, uh, we, can, we can then talk about which motion we'd like to make. Um, so one motion is that the building is not a si significant structure according to criteria stated in the demolition permit uh, bylaw, demolition delay bylaw. Um, a second motion is uh, in which case the demolition permit is approved. Um, a second motion could be that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria, but the proposed demolition would not be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town. Therefore, the historical commission approves the demolition permit. And third, um, a, a motion that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria and the proposed demolition would be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town. Uh, and the historical commission therefore wishes to put a, a delay on granting the permit. Is that, does that make sense? Okay. Can we modify number two? Sure. Just say it is a significant building and it could be seen as detrimental as a loss, except that um, the proprietors are willing to reuse adaptively reuse the parts and create another structure of, of equal or better value. Um, because I don't, I don't want it going in the record that we don't think that it would be a loss. Mm -hmm. Can we add, add language which uh, attests to its structural instability and it's, I mean, that's, I think to me, the more salient fact is that it simply can't be, right. can't be rehabilitated. So it it's significant. significant. It would but be a significant loss, but it's already it can't be saved, right? right. And then the right. parts are going to be reused. Those, yeah, those four things. That's good, Roman. Okay. Um, well, we has anybody <laughs> writing this down? <laughs> oh, Ben's got the wording down, right, Ben? <laughs> hey. I can't okay. make a motion, but no, you can't. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you if uh, you've uh, been so making can I just say then, so moved? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then if you read back what you've got, then somebody will say so moved. Or I, I can I can take a stab at it that the building is significant according to the criteria of the bylaw, uh, that its destruction would be a significant loss to the town, but that it is unstable and uh, not. Uh, irreparable and and irreparable and therefore the demolition permit is granted is that right? right and and the proprietors are willing to adaptively reuse oh. parts right <laughs> how's that been yeah. got that yeah so, uh, <laughs> i'm typing so moved. i think i got it yeah <laughs> okay so that's it Robin has made a motion. Thank you, Robin. Second. Okay, I see Jan second. Okay, um, so any further discussion? Seeing none, um, all in favor, please raise your physical hand. And uh, there we go. Yes, seven, seven to, seven to zero. Um, there's just like, one last, uh, one last thing I want to, I just like to say that um, 
for the North Amherst Community Farm and all of you involved in it. Uh, we just so appreciate your due diligence and um, uh, the care you've taken for the farmhouse and, uh, and, and the barn and being willing to explore other alternatives. And certainly it's clear that this structure is on its last legs um, and, and we're grateful that you're willing to find a new life for some of the structural elements to carry forward uh, a part of Amherst uh, agricultural history. Thank you. It's true. I've used you as an example, actually, a positive <laughs> example. Can I uh, make a quick statement? Um, I'm just going to inject at this moment. I wanted to talk about this at the next meeting, but there is um, the Mass Pres uh, Preservation Mass uh, has an awards program. And um, one of the, I, my, from my read of it, my understanding is that um, uh, a person can self nominate. And I think there is a award category that particularly fits the North Amherst Farm. And I believe you have five years to receive the award. So we can discuss this more at the next meeting, but I've been wanting to mention to the commission that I'd really like to see us nominate the North, North Amherst Farm Project for one of these awards. There's a lot of representation of Eastern Mass in those awards. And really yeah. it's just been such an exceptional project to see you guys um, go through. And um, so we'll bring that up as an agenda item, hopefully at the next meeting. But this seemed like a good moment to interject that into the session. So thank you so much for all your careful and deli deliberative thought and, and action. That's really, it's really impressive. Don't get too excited. It's not a million dollars or anything. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, is there, is, is it any dollars? <laughs> I don't know if it's any I dollars. Think it's, it's, <laughs> not. Not. I, <laughs> but it's an honor. <laughs> yes, that I, that I was prepared to assume. Uh, and then <laughs> you said it's not a million dollars. I thought, well, I'm sure there's a, a lovely thought. Thank you very much. It's you never occurred to, to us that, that we were. For it. <laughs> I'm sure there'll um, be something you can hang on, hang on the wall of the farmhouse. Yes, or the pavilion. Or the pavilion, uh, right. We cut it in half or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Thank you very much, okay. uh, All right. um, uh, commissioners. And uh, I guess that's it for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. It's been Thank a you. great, Thank you. great going through this process. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're Thank great. You. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Bruce. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, next on our agenda is announcements, and um, the one, the one, the important one that I can think about it is the Writers Walk event. And I'm wondering if we, sh we, I think we need to talk more about that. So maybe we should move that on the agenda, but uh, after the CPA uh, projects. Is that agreeable? Yeah, okay. that makes sense. But just for the, the public in the room, just knowing that we have a, a, a launch event for a writer's walk uh, sign tour on uh, this Friday at 4.30, it'll be held outside of 97 Spring Street and all are welcome to attend. More details to come. <laughs> Good. All right then. Um, Let's go to uh, the CPA project applications. And um, we'll just go in order, in the order they appear on the agenda. Uh, so first up is the Conkey House. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll, uh, all of the commissioners ha have received the application materials and we've gone through it. So we're familiar with the projects as you've described them. Um, but we'd like to give you, uh, each applicant, an opportunity to just uh, call out anything to our attention that you'd like to. Um, I think we can also maybe take just a few minutes um, for questions from commissioners uh, or suggestions from commissioners about, uh, you know, how how to position your request with the um, 
uh, Community Preservation Act committee. So perhaps it might it might amount to, you know, five to ten minutes per application. Um, so let's see, um, representatives from the Conkey House. Um, let's see, I can bring them in here. Uh, we have Jean and Jane Porter. So. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Um, is Jean um, here? Is Jean here? Yes. Hi, Jane. I'm here. Oh, good. Okay. Um, is there, you know, any anything new that you'd like to let us know about your application or anything you um, like? I I feel like we we uh, spent time to try to make a concise presentation. I, I mean, if you want, I can go over it. All I would really be doing is reading down what we already wrote. So would you like me to do that or are you all familiar with it? Um, commissioners, what's your, do you, do you feel you've got the sense of the application? Yes. Yes, okay. All right, um, then uh, thank you, Jean. I think, I think we feel that we were pretty familiar with the application now, um, but it, so if you have any additional questions for us, I think probably commissioners might have a couple of points of clarification, you know, things that they'd like to understand um, also. Sure, I, I hope to spend the time answering their questions. Um, I think that okay. would be the best use of the time. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, all right, uh, Robin, I see your hand. Yeah, so I'm gonna start off by saying that um, for a number of these fabulous projects, um, I'm going to be talking about um, other sources of funding, and that is in no way a, um, a, a suggestion that I'm not supportive of the, the projects, but um, I'm trying to, um, the uh, applicants can know that I was the former representative to the CPA committee, uh, and Hetty Startup is taking over that position, but I had uh, a particular interest in both encouraging applicants to support additional sources of funding and also um, helping applicants find additional sources of funding. The main um, thrust of which is to see our CPA dollars go further if there's extra financing out there. And one of the things that we talked about in the last round of CPA funding was creating um, a proposal timeline that allowed for um, an information session and applicants to ask questions much earlier in the process. We haven't quite gotten there yet. So, some of this might seem, um, it might seem daunting and it's not necessarily, I'm, I'm just trying to get this process rolling. So people uh, can, and my fellow commissioners can, can weigh in on their thoughts in terms of, so this is the Salem Place property. And um, I had pulled together some, a, a matrix of funding sources and trying to understand what other resources are, are out there for other projects. Um, the Salem Place project seems to be in a particularly tight spot because they're not a 501c3, they're not a cultural institution. Um, they're actually a really great um, example of why we need things like CPA funds. The only thing that I don't know, and I don't understand tax credits enough, and maybe Jane Wald does, um, is whether or not that would be something that uh, the organization could consider looking into applying for to supplement their budget and I would encourage them in that direction. And then the only other thing I noticed is that there was a, an item in, and unfortunately the way we have the um, applications presented to us is not quite um, as visually um, delineated as I'd like, but there was mention of a plaque for, um, uh, for a historic marker. And I don't think that that qualifies for funding under CPA. So I'm basically the strict definitions person. <laughs> and. Um, that's not always the favorite person in the room, but um, there we have it. So that's, that's, those are basically my comments. Uh, Becky, did you have a have your hand up also? 
just just to clarify, I think the last meeting we talked about um, possibly um, it's quite a large sum to be asking for, and I'm I guess I'm wondering if there are if it can be split at all in, into uh, or are, are are all of these things listed absolutely essential to be done now, or can some of them wait for? Uh, another application for another grant, maybe next year. Um, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Jean, oh, please okay. go ahead. <laughs> uh, so uh, there is a spot on your application where you talk about urgency. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to be as sort of con straightforward and concrete as I can, just naming what the issues are. Um, right now, we're hopeful that if we can address the roof, um, see the problem is the rain comes off the roof and it curls around and hits the wooden portion of the dormers. And so that's been going on for some time. And we're concerned if it gets into the uh, structural repairs of the building that it will really, you know, the cost will continue to go up. So the urgency is from that regard. Um, okay. We can't do any of the other repairs till we make sure that the roof is watertight and, and you know, protects the subsequent work that will be done. Um, in terms of splitting the project up, two projects that must go together so that we can use one set of staging for both projects, because the staging is quite expensive, would be to do the masonry on the chimneys and the roofing at the same time. Also because the, the problem with the roofing is, I mean, the, the um, slate tiles are in good condition, but it's all the flashing and the flashing has to be attached to the chimneys and they can't be attached to chimneys that haven't been repaired yet. So those two projects must go together and that seemed to me to be part one. Uh, part two uh, is repairing all of that woodwork that's been damaged, water damaged. Um, and the, the woodwork on the porch. And that all seems to go together because um, you repair the woodwork mm. when the carpenter's there, you paint once the woodwork's been repaired, you know, okay. so that those two projects go together. The urgency on that, again, is that the fascia boards are already rotted. And so, um, am I going on too long? No, no, this oh. is helpful. <laughs> Okay, so so that the right now the roof is being held up and we're we're very hopeful. <laughs> it's hard to tell until they rip it apart, but we're very hopeful that the the, the roof of the wraparound porch is still structurally sound. However, it's rotted. So the longer we wait, the more in danger we are to um, have the expense go way, way up. The other problem is that the gutter is attached to the rotten fascia board. And so it delivers the water down near the corner of the foundation, which for the moment is fine. But uh, again, that's been going on for a number of years. So we, you know, that's the urgency. And those yes. are the phases of the project. Uh, okay, that's that's helpful. I so it's it looks like the first phase that you described would be roof uh, flashing and roofing at the dormers, the hip caps, um, right. the counter flashing at the chimneys, and then masonry, and that's right. uh, that's about one hundred and twenty thousand. Yes, and that, it is. Yeah, that. I think I think it's wise to you're wise to to divide this into these segments. Okay. Would we consider the fence to be something that could be postponed? Yes, that there's no urgency. That's more for the aesthetics and the historic, yeah. you know, value. Yeah, of and we 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 love and appreciate the the, the fence, but right. the shutters and the other. Yeah, even trim and things like that. Just it's almost you've put them in. Um, you've on your budget. It's almost in urgency order, right? Your priority order. Mm -hmm. What I did was um, I attached the uh, the quotes from the 
from the people who'd be doing the work. And in the budget, in the grid budget, I just opened it back out the way they presented it. But while the roofer is there, you know, they've got listed all the things to, that they need to do to fix the roof. And while the mason is there utilizing the staging, there's also a hole in the foundation. Fortunately, the building seems very sound. They've got big chestnut beams underneath and a big sill going all the way around that seems good. And the HOA has already um, preserved, the porch was literally rotting off the building. And all that work has been done where the roof was supported and the whole understructure and duck deck has been replaced. So that has allowed many extra years to try and pull together more and more funding. But the HOA just can't do it. I mean, these are apartment dweller, dwellers who are just trying to make ends meet. And this building is, as you see, has really got a lot of expense. How high a priority is furnace replacement? Um, do you know, that's an excellent question and I don't have the answer to that. You know, I might suggest that for the furnace, it's a relatively small amount, but you might want to move it to the HOA column. Um, okay. Because it, it, it could be interpreted as maintenance mm -hmm. as opposed to preservation. And because it's a relatively small amount, it, 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 it would probably the, the, the appearance of the budget or the case might be improved for purposes okay. of CPA. Yeah, it would bring it down enough, yeah. Um, and Jane, as we did that, um, so um, the, the HOA board came up with a trying to uh, do, we thought it had to be matching funds. And so they came up with their absolute max that they felt they could come up with um, which was to take 20,000 out of the capital mm -hmm. uh, reserve and then charge everyone who lives there a, like a thousand dollars. Which, um, so what I could do if I restructured the budget so that the furnace comes out of that 70, um, $71,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, other comments, questions from commissioners? Jane, I was looking at the um, CPA law. Is it the guidance? I can't remember one of them, which um, does have a statement that rehabilitation repairs have to conform with and this is a question for you too, Ben, conform with the Secretary of Interior Standards. Have we dealt with that before? You know, that's a good question. Um, so some time ago, uh, the Emily Dickinson Museum had CPA funding, mm -hmm. but because we just, as a matter of course, um, adhere to the Secretary of the Interior Standards, I don't, it, that particular topic, I don't think was discussed explicitly. Um, uh, but I'd ask uh, Jean and Jane if, if you're familiar with, with that. Um, and, and I am looking at, it is in, in the actual law itself under rehabilitation. I'm, I'm sorry, Robin, familiar. could you say that again? Yeah, um, I just looked it up again. It's in the actual text of the law. It's not in the guidance, okay. it's in the law. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Jane, so, is that just, just a matter of, of having the appropriate consultant on board or? Yeah, it, it's... Um, It's a mat. Well, it's a matter of having uh, the project overseen by someone who who's familiar with those standards, uh, and that certain 
certain techniques or methods by tradespersons uh, would be, you know, there's, there is some guidance for that too. Mm -hmm. um, so it might, it could be a matter of um, asking the subcontractors or the contractors or the subcontractors for, um, you know, like a request for qualifications. Could they, could they say what, if they've worked on other historic pro preservation projects or historic rehabilitation projects and, um, you know, are they familiar with the Secretary of the Interior standards? And would the um, Massachusetts Historical Commission be able to provide any sort of a technical assistance role if there was an issue? I'm just trying to, I don't quite understand the process, but I guess we could cross that bridge when it came to it. <laughs> I th well, you know, you bring up a very good point, Robin, that we should be prepared to, to give guidance or advice on how to, to meet that, that I mean, standard. I can, I can well. make an inquiry if, that, if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. Just because these are such big, these are, we've got two very big projects here. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, oh, so I, I think I'm probably uh, for for Jane Porter and Jean Lukens, we should follow up with you about this this item that has just come up. Um, uh, so we can sort of I, if you're not if you're not familiar with the Secretary of the Interior Standards, there's a you can um, you can you know what I'll I'll try to find it while we're talking, but you can Google it. Uh, through the National Park Service. And let's see if I can find it and I'll send it to you. Um, it's, uh, th there's, a, there, there's a summary version and then there's much more, um, a much more detailed version. But we can you know, point out to you what to be aware of. And, and Jane, while you're doing that, um, as the person who's taking over from Robin, um, it, it just, this is tough, you know, because it's a sort of chicken and egg thing where the, the, the applicant has provided all sorts of very detailed information about the work that is needed to be done. Um, but we as a de deliberative body are trying to um, do things in the way that is required of us by law. Um, and so, as the person replacing Robin on the CPA committee, I'm I'm particularly vested in trying to kind of do what I should be doing in order to evaluate um, applications as they come before us. Um, and this is this is a really important building. Um, you know, there are, maybe we should be making it a you know, uh, its own little historic <laughs> district, you know, as a building or um, beefing it up somehow so that it can, it can uh, benefit from different kinds of um, support um, that maybe we didn't know about until now. Um, that's just, I don't know whether you managed to find the, the link, Jane, while we've been, while I've been wittering on. <laughs> Yes, and now that I found it, I'm not. I'm not seeing the, the chat that I'm used to seeing, so I'm not sure how to how to get it. Uh, I did find something similar on the um, state website um, that talked about uh, uh, talked about using historic um, using sort of modified approaches to. Uh, restoration. There's, it's quite extensive, actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, and I've, we, yeah. I've and got a, we, I've got a link, but and I can tell you what it is, but I can't, I can't pop it that's in. Fine. That's okay. Okay. Just, you can tell us. Okay. It's uh, nps.gov/slash/forward/slash. TPS 
forward slash standards forward slash rehabilitation forward slash rehab <laughs> forward slash stand for what's the last stand as as in standards it's the oh, okay. S-T-A-N-D. yeah okay Whew. okay um so i think we've probably covered what we would what what's helpful for us to know tonight um about the company stevens house um application so we thank you for yeah, thank you very much here with us. Thank, thank you, thank you for much. taking such good care of the house oh thank you very much i i do want to just mention something i don't know if it's out of hand or not but um, there are a number of units in the building that will be coming up for sale potentially um, as people are nearing the age of retirement. And as it is a mixed use HOA, there has been some informal discussion about whether it makes sense for uh, there to be a division between the historic portion and the, HO, the residential portion. Mm -hmm because the interests of both parties sometimes diverge. Would the town have any interest in having a museum or a building and having this, you know, the, the owners need to be bought out at some point. I just throw that out there because I don't know if that would be a similar, I just throw it out there. Hmm. Well. Thank you for that. Yeah. For the idea. <laughs> Certainly one will yes, I mean, I, I don't know if that's too wacky to bring up in the context of this meeting. But almost all of us are approaching our 60s, 70s, and 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I also yeah. comment that at one point, what did you, either Jean or Jane, you mentioned that it was our application. You understand it's not, you're not applying to us. Right. Um, yes. We, we're just making a recommendation on your behalf out of all the ones that are in our area. Okay. So yes. we're not making the decision. Right. And, and so what you're suggesting, the suggestion I have is to move the furnace over. We're just trying to strengthen the application, help right. you strengthen the application for the CPA committee. Right and okay. have the best number for us to work with as we recommend to them how much each project we're given might you know, be best served, so. Okay. Right. Yeah, and that the, um, the CPA committee will, will probably want to know what, in just the way that you broke it out to us, what things are most urgent and, mm -hmm. and, and what things could, could potentially go unfunded for. Did, you know, did this but, um, application read well? I mean, did you? Were you able to understand it? And oh, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like it's also important to um, uh, to let them know about the uh, qualifications of the people who gave the estimates, because I do believe they have had experience in uh, historic uh, restoration. I think that was one of the um, one of the things that uh, that we were looking for. Yeah, I think so. If that's a criteria, I would put it in there because it usually means things cost more. So it would help justify the expense. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have that information, you should definitely put it forward. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we'll okay. now go to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now go to um, the Strong House application. Strong house, yep. That would be uh, George here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in the interest of time, just to uh, move it a, a little bit faster for each application, because we do have a few to get yeah. through and then mm -hmm. kind of have a wrap up discussion at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just ask a few questions. Yeah. We don't really need it represented in every case. No, I, and this one is fairly um, concise. So, um, are there uh, questions about questions about the Amherst Historical Society application concerning an engineering study for the Strong House? Um, 
so I have a I have a question. I have a question and a comment, or not a question. I have two statements, I guess. The first one is that I don't think that it's fundable under CPA because uh, it doesn't meet the um, restoration rehabilitation acquisition, or there's one other one in there um, that generally uh, studies are not fundable under the historic preservation part of the program. I did look at the cultural mass cultural council website um, again referring back to the fact that i'm trying to find out where other sources of funding are for appropriate items for our applicants and it looks like uh there is a technical assistance grant that might fit this particular project um i noticed on your application that you didn't have a particular dollar amount yet because you were waiting for a quote to come in they have a um, an info session coming up on October 28th, 2021. Uh, their, uh, I believe that their application process opened today with I think letters of intent and the deadline is January 14th of 2022. And it's all available on their website. I can send the link if needed, um, but I would encourage application to that particular program if, um, since in my read, this is not fundable through, through CPA. Remind me uh, what organization was this you were talking about? This is the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Mass Cultural Council. And it's their cultural facilities fund. And if you go to the Mass, if you just Google Mass Cultural Council Cultural Facilities Fund, it'll take you to that webpage. It's not particularly complicated to navigate to the important um, spots you can register for that info session and um, figure out if you're in fact eligible as I think you are because you're an interpretive science, a facility of interpretive science, I think. <laughs> if it's a science. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I would just say not not to open up a whole can of worms, but um, there is possibility that um, such a study like this could be funded under the administrative um, expenses of, of CPA. I think um, if you, I think, and Robin probably knows more about this than I do, but I do believe um, the CPA commission has the ability to fund studies that could lead to um, historic preservation, housing, open space, recreation projects. So I think there would have to be probably a justification that there's a suspicion that there is something wrong with the architecture or engineering that needs to be studied. But, um, and I think we don't have the guidance, legal guidance on that now, but I, I think I don't want to completely rule out the administration true. and administrative expenses. And I think- and, and Oh, I was just there, gonna say, this I think is, they're this required. Is, oh, go ahead. Oh, that this is a, a question that started last um, yeah. cycle, and we're we're trying to get an answer to George, so that's why I, I didn't mention that. But it's, it's also a possibility, depending on how um, the town council, a uh, uh, council with an S, not a C, um, oh. <laughs> determines the the way the the law and the guidance is worded. So that's a possibility too. Um, Catherine, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, a helpful piece of information um, for George and if they choose to go through the Mass Cultural Council, I believe this is still applicable, but that it has to be a one-to-one -one match. Say that again? Sense. I, think, I think that beyond just having community support, you have to, whatever you're applying for, if I'm you know, speaking yes. out of matching terms, funds. Think, yeah, you have to have like a complete matching fund for whatever you're applying for. Yeah, that that is true. Um, so that it may make some sense to apply to the cultural facilities fund and in the administrative category right. for CPA. That's true. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, George, do you have a sense of scale, what, what an engineering study would be? I don't even have that at this point. Um, we have, I've gotten Thayer Street Associates to um, agree to give us an estimate for that kind of study. I'm 
assuming that it would be thorough that we're talking about how the house was constructed and what the condition of the wood is, you know, out of which it was constructed and um, build it out from there. You know, the plaster, the clabbers. Um, we, we have never done this before, never been done for the house. Um, so we're very curious about what condition our 250 year old structure is actually in. We can know where to um, target restoration fund. That sounds to me like a conditions assessment, um, which is another, you know, approach to evaluating. Yeah, basically what it says, evaluating the condition of the different systems within the building, the different building systems. Um, and that, that can be done by an architect um, and they may want the services of an engineer to a structural engineer, but if you have connections with if you already have connections with an architect, say on the historical society board or former board member, it, that might be um, in some sense an, an easier place to start if, if your goal is to understand all of the building systems. If your goal is to understand the, the strength or the condition of the structure, the structural elements, then that would be a structural engineer. But um, an architect might also have recommendations along those lines. Correct, yes, yeah. So yeah. in either case, it uh, might benefit us to talk to an architect. It could, yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, um, have we... Have we heard what we need um, about the strong house at this point? I had one more question. I think there was um, a statement in there that suggested that the timeline was necessary um, to correspond with the, the beginning of the Jones Library project. Is that correct? And if so, Ben, what kind of data are we looking at there so we can assess for urgency? Well, that, that's on the ballot for, for November. So I think well, still, I know, and pro yeah. provided it passes on the ballot, when would they be actually be breaking ground? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really not sure actually. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's an important point, George, because these funds are not available until July of next year. Understood. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. You. I think, yes, go ahead. Jo George, did you, was there something else you wanted to say? Uh, not at this point. Thank you for your advice. And if no one has, if people have nothing else, I'll leave the uh, meeting. You can go on. Okay, okay thank, you, thank you. All right, next is the Amherst Women's Club. Hills House Repairs. And let's see, let's see. Um, so Dorothy is- um, Viviana are yeah. here. Okay. Yes. And um, Kath is, is Catherine, is Catherine to, on two, I think. Okay. Yeah. Catherine and uh, Libby. No, no, not. Maybe not. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Um, so, th thank you for. I mean, we've we've had a nice chance to talk with you before, yes. and um, yeah. so are there kind of new things that you'd like to share with us? Or um, I don't necessarily think so. We did get. I did get an email from Sarah. Uh, with some more questions. So mm -hmm. I have to amend the application. It has to be in by Friday. I'm in the process of working on that. Mm -hmm. um, she seemed, I mean, I, I'm not sure where 
these questions come from, but at any rate, uh, it was clarifying some of the, um, some of the, of the uh, estimate that we got. And it was interesting because one of the first questions she asked us was, uh, why did we only have one estimate? And I had sent uh, an email to the Mr. Mr. Anthony Delaney, who was the person I was communicating with before. I guess he doesn't work for the town anymore. But anyway, I asked him that question and he said one estimate would be fine. So that's why we didn't get other estimates. And I've explained all that and what I'm going to send to her okay. on Friday. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, for CPA, I think over the years, you know, sometimes applications come in with no estimates at all. And oh my goodness, those are really very <laughs> difficult to assess. Yeah. And you, yes, you can imagine how that yeah. conversation goes. Uh, and I don't know, it's, I don't know what your experience with this has been, Robin, but I think usually it is one estimate. Oh, um, I think I'm, my uh, experience is probably colored by working in housing rehab and community development, where the expectation is that you have, you attempt to get at least three. Two is good because if they're within the ballpark of each other, then you know you're on the right track. Um, and so that's definitely helpful. Um, if there's a significant difference in terms of the qualifications of the contractors in historic preservation, then, you know, being limited to one estimate is perfectly reasonable. You know, a second estimate is always helpful. Um, I mean, I may have pushed for that in the past. I think I probably have, but it's not a deal breaker. Well, the person who who has given us his estimate, his name is Ronald Keith, and he has done historic preservation. He's done a lot of work on this house over the years and he knows it very well. Mm -hmm. um, then I would so just be prepared to, yeah, I would be prepared to present his credentials. Um, oh, I have, I mean, we have his license numbers and all of that stuff. Okay, but I mean, it's credentials in terms of historic preservation, preservation in particular. That well, this, this house is an example of his credentials. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> know myself what other houses he's worked on. I know he has worked on others. On well, this I, house, he's working the last 25 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I think it, I, that's, a, that's a good point to make in your application because mm -hmm. the Hills House is certainly recognized as an important historic building in Amherst. If, um, if it's possible to get another couple of examples from him uh, of historic structures that it, 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 uh, it strengthens the case that mm -hmm. this individual is qualified to do this work mm -hmm. and, and that he's got that, he's got that background that, um, uh, uh, that, that, is more persuasive about his numbers as the mm -hmm. as the only estimate. Okay. Um, okay. They also asked. She also asked us if we were planning to sell the house. So I don't know if she thought we were going to grab all this money, fix the house up, and sell it. But no, we have no plans to sell the house. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Well, that it also doesn't change the fact that the house needs this. Exactly. It does. Um, so I have a couple of comments, Jane, if we're ready. Please, yeah. Okay. So um, again, looking um, at my not completely thorough, and maybe Catherine knows more about this than I do, um, but uh, pulling together information on other funding sources, um, there were two potential. Uh, what? Let me start again. Another project that we're looking at, we're asking the applicant to apply with the intention of applying for other funding. Um, just noting that in the application, and I'm trying to make a process of this for applicants that if there are other funds uh, available out there that it seems like they would be good, um, uh, good projects for to encourage people in that direction. And so it's not, um, it's, it's not a, a, a deal breaker or anything like that, but, um, and Jane, I was hoping that you would weigh in on this. When I looked at the um, 
Mass Historical Commission's uh, preservation funds, I noted in their materials that they said that emergency funds for stabilization were available uh, at any time at the discretion of the, I'm not sure if it was the secretary. Um, so I thought that this house, because it is a, a nonprofit would be uh, a good kind of test case for that. And I'd be happy to make that inquiry myself and see if I can understand the process a little better and recommend the information to the applicant. There's also a $10,000 um, preservation mass uh, matching grant for um, exterior work. Um, that seems like it would be uh, a, a good, um, that the project would be a, a good applicant for that fund as well. So the objective here is just to get our applicants to apply to as much outside funding as, you know, is reasonable and under the time frame and in terms of the urgency um, so that we can spread our CPA funds as far and wide as possible and also provide support to our applicants, um, you know, to better package funding for their projects. So those are my basic statements. The uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission requirement is that, I think it's that, uh, that the um, applicant be a um, nonprofit and that the property be listed on the state register, which I believe is the case yeah. with the Women's Club, yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand where you said the $10,000 matching grant came from. Is that the same source? Nope, that's the um, <laughs> Preservation Mass uh, has a new program. Of Say it again, please. Preservation Mass is the foundation. Oh, Mass as in the state of Massachusetts? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. And this is foundation. So if you Google Preservation Mass, uh, Historic Preservation Grant, you'll find it. And their, um, I believe their letter of intent deadline is coming up on December 1st. And as I said to our other applicants, you're welcome to still apply for the full amount from us, but if you can make an application to another organization, you can just include that in your, in your statement. Uh, can I uh, clarify if I understood correctly? You are suggesting two possible funds. One is Mass Historical requ Requirement Fund. Is it so? No, Massachusetts Historical Commission. Commission? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Commission. Preservation mm -hmm. Funds. And Preservation. what I can do is I can make an inqu telephone inquiry on your behalf on that particular fund because I'd like to understand it a little bit better. I know that they're very complicated applications and I don't want to send you guys down a rabbit hole. Um, I did look I, at that when I was noodling around when we were first looking for funds. I think I stumbled into that in the application, if I remember, is very, very long. It could be, yeah. Yeah. So and you are going to do that uh, uh, investigation and find yep. out. Yep. Okay. And how we are going to get information from you. Should we write you uh, email so you get our contact or what? I will get your, I'll get your contact information from Ben. Okay. And the second uh, possibility is preservation. Uh, preservation preservation Mass. Massachusetts uh, yes. uh, Foundation yep. that has a, a deadline December 1st when we can apply for the matching fund in case that we uh, get funding from CPA. Is it so? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank that you. That application, I think, is not as complicated. Okay. <laughs> Less money Don't give us too, too complicated. <laughs> and if it is complicated, you can tell me, and I won't recommend it. <laughs> Relatively new. We shall try. <laughs> All right, other other questions, comments, discussion points. Well, it's a little yeah. commercial on our behalf. You know, we, we are very proud of our house and we've taken care of it ourselves for a hundred years and now we're reaching out for help and it isn't important. I think, you know, this whole string of houses here as people drive into town, it's such a lovely uh, place for people to drive through before they get up to the main street. Well, yeah. we are main street, but I mean North Pleasant Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine, I see your hand. Uh, just a, 
I hadn't planned on saying anything, but I, what Donnie just said, that we've taken care of it uh, for a hundred years. I don't know if people really know that we've done an awful lot of maintenance and uh, renov renovation. I don't know if that's the right word. We've replaced a uh, heating system in the house. Um, it was still running on old early 1900 steam radiators until about 10 years ago, eight years ago. Those have gone in that process, we were able to add uh, an air conditioning for uh, the bottom part of the house where we were able to get ducts in, done a lot of uh, new electrical stuff, new panels, uh, electrical panels, um, a lot of what I would call maintenance stuff that you don't see. I mean, uh, when they gave us the cost on absolutely hydro sealing the basement so it wasn't quite such a flow through stream down there. I about died, but we did it and it's worked. So there's been an awful lot uh, that you don't see on the outside. Now it's the outside's term. Mm -hmm. um, previous people have talked about how the weather has really wrought havoc with the outside and that's where we are now that um, mm -hmm. the 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 renovation of all of that beautiful gingerbread stuff that goes with that time period um now we're at the point now where it's it's needs to be done so <laughs> Just a little background. Yeah, yeah. We should also yeah. mention that we did an extensive um, redecoration uh, of oh, the, first, the public rooms uh, to bring them to authentic Victorian wallpapers and paints and things like that. So that's not quite as extensive as the yeah. other stuff, but it's important. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, you could. Um, so that house, I believe there are nice illustrations or at least town there's a lithograph of Amherst that will show oh. both Hills houses and the factories and you know going oh. establishing the the historical significance in Amherst economic and cultural history that you know that that won't hurt <laughs> Uh, Jane, where, where would we be able to find that? I know we will have lots of, of old photographs. I don't know if the originals were lithographs or not, but, um, but I don't remember one that also shows the factory sites. So um, I think I can, I think I might have that where I can hmm. zoom in on it and uh, um, if I do, I'll try to send it to you. Um, if you can also get it from the Jones Library from Special right. Collections, you can talk right. to Cindy Harbison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have been my what I would have done if I hadn't had you here to ask. Well, you better ask her anyway because <laughs> she'll probably she'll probably get to it faster than I will. <laughs> Jane, uh, just the last comment is just the same comment about the um, preservation standards. The interior Secretary of Interior standards would apply to this particular project as well. Yes. So um, national, that's your national park one, Robin. Right. Yes, that's correct. So if you're if if you're able to get information about the subcontractor and the work, I, I'm sorry, contractor and the work um, that firm has done with any other kind of historic structure in addition to the woman's club, which, apparently, which he's worked on for quite a while. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. For your Thank, help. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, North Cemetery. Uh, next.
Yeah, I think uh, I can talk about this one as well as I think Alan Snow is here to mm-hmm. discuss it as well. Alan Snow is the, um, I forget your official title, Tree Warden, Grounds <laughs> Maintenance. Division Director of Tree and there Grounds. You there you go. Thanks, Alan. So, yeah, I think um, if uh, commissioners have any questions about the North Cemetery project, uh, Alan sent me a few pictures today I can share just to give everyone reference of what we're talking about. This is North Cemetery, which is off of East Pleasant Street as you're heading um, up to North Amherst. And the uh, focus of this application is on uh, this white fence that is in a state of disrepair. And um, I think in the application, Alan outlined the, uh, the history of the fence, as far as we know, just dating back 20, 20 or so years. Um, but uh, I, I was actually just looking through the Macris uh, entry for North Cemetery uh, this afternoon, and and did note that um, in the in the early days of West uh, North Cemetery, it was actually uh, 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 sheep were pastured out on the cemetery during a while it was an active burial ground. So I imagine it had a fence then, um, but then by 1880s, I believe there is mention of there being a fence um, on all sides of of North Cemetery. So we're not totally sure what the appearance of that fence was, but just, you know, just noting that it was fenced in um, and that it's time to replace this fence. And I think uh, DPW planning, we have every intention of working with the Historical Commission to help design and find a historically appropriate fence for this landscape. And here's the dog. Um, uh, uh, can I make a comment, Jane? Sorry? Can I make a comment? Yes, please. So um, the request is for the replacement of the fence with a new fence? Yes. Um, my concern is that that doesn't fall under rehabilitation, I suppose it could fall under restoration if it was on an, an, a replica, but I don't know, Jane, do you want to weigh in on that? I'm just throwing it out there. As I said, I'm the definitions person tonight, so no one will like me. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just have a question too, Jane, of what the composition of the fence is. From the photograph, it's difficult to tell whether it's wood or metal. In the and application, the, if you read the application, it's wood. Yeah, yeah. it's wood. So has, oh, I guess the question is, has it always been wood? Mm. I can answer that if you like. Yes, please, Alan. Okay. Um, as far as I know, um, the history that I am aware of of the fence goes back about 15 years, I'm told. Um, and when it was, there was a, a great deal of concern about replacing the previous fence with a historically accurate fence. Um, and they, they built it using um, rough sawn lumber, um, which is a, you know, a two by two by five uh, versus a two by four. Uh, it's actually two and a quarter by five inches. Uh, and uh, same thing with the other, uh, dimensions, they're all full-size dimensions of the wood. Um, and it's all, you know, uh, white pine or spruce. Um, and it has just uh, actually held up fairly decently for, for a non, non-cedar or black locust or um, pressure treated, so. And the fence that it, that's pictured today is is to replicate the fence that it replaced? Yeah, I think that's, you know, um, I would like to have a discussion around, I'd like to get more information on really, is this a historical fence? Is there, 
I can't get that information. I don't know why they chose this particular style. Um, it's not a fence that you would see uh, or I've seen anywhere before. It's a beautiful fence. Uh, has granite posts holding up most majority of the fences held up by granite posts. Um, but uh, I, I would like to move to something that is um, easier to maintain and to, and to fix when it gets broken, when a car hits it or something. Um, and uh, something that would be um, essentially easy to maintain, but re uh, maintain and uh, replace parts. Yeah, I, I guess my questions are trying to get to the heart of what Robin was saying in terms of definition. Is it a replacement or, or a recreation or a, anything that falls under the preservation definition? I think that the, the preservation, if it's 15 years old, the only way that I could see it could fall under historic preservation funds would be as a restoration project. And if you're not restoring um, a historically accurate replica of something, I, I don't feel like it meets the guidelines for historic preservation funding. Um, and that, and then that was the origin of my question, Robin, is, yes. is right, this yes, historically correct? Right, and I'm not. I'm not hearing that. But um. yeah, I I agree with that reading. Um, it doesn't. This fence, from the application, this fence does not restore a previous fence in this location, or doesn't replicate a previous fence in this location. And if the goal is to have something easier to maintain, that's not a restoration goal. Sounds very reasonable. Um, I see a hand. Hetty? Um, did you say, Alan, that the posts um, are granite? Correct. The, the uh, ornamental end posts that are at the entrance to each of the the driveways are made of wood, but in between those sections, so those sections range from about 100 and, what was it, 109 feet to about 80, 85 feet. Um, all the posts in between those ornamental wooden posts are granite, and that's what physically holds all those that fencing up are granite posts that are in the ground. Thank you. I, I, I guess trying to find any maps that might show what the fences historically have been might, would they show different materials um, in different ways on those maps? I'm, I might be asking for something that doesn't exist. Um, I, I, I guess my, my, my concern is that we take down something that might be older than we think it is, especially those granite posts. Those, those the newel posts on those, entrances to me look you know I don't know I can't tell how old they are you know whether they're clone, colonial revival era or whether they're 15 years old you know they're sort of is there no money money through the cemetery as, association am I speak I, I don't know how it's set up in Amherst I should um, is is this I know that <laughs> Amos has many cemeteries. Um, is there not any provision, is my question, that funds work in the town cemeteries? Or burying grounds, whatever. Ben, do you want to take that one? Um, you probably know the ins and outs of the of the budgets better than I do, but just no, you know, I think maintenance budgets are stretched thin for, for every piece of land in, in Amherst that we're trying to keep up, whether it's trails or fences or parks and all of that. And this is a, a big ticket item um, that need, needs to be replaced all at once. So. Okay. It, it may, be, may very well not be the appropriate, um, you know, restoration may not be the appropriate category for this to be under. So it sounds like it is. Yeah. Becky? Um, yeah, I guess we're, we're talking about restoration and this isn't 
in 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 the in the proposal is it possible to go back and take a look and try and do something that's authentically historic yeah what? i guess that's what I, I was curious about that too from the commission members if you know i'll do all the research i can you know working maybe with special collections to figure out what the historic condition of this fence was but if we if we can find an old old photograph or an old description of, yeah. of su such a fence, if we were to then apply to for CPA funds to restore the fence to its previous condition, would that then be more eligible? I think that I gets think into so. a question, and Jane knows more about restoration. I mean, again, it's like a question of these definitions. So right. certainly, um, it. If you're if you're if you're replicating something that existed to make it more historically accurate, I think you're going down a much better path. But right. whether or not it right. meets the guideline is um, that's that's an, unfortunately probably an illegal mm -hmm. question. But I think as it stands, it doesn't really meet the guideline for okay. what the funds were intended for. I can just very very briefly um, say something about the. The replacement of the the fence at the homestead and the evergreens uh, that yeah. was specifically designed on the basis of existing parts and pieces. Um, so, you know, we tried very very hard to get the 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 measure. Well, we we did get the measurements just right for the pickets because we had existing nineteenth century pickets, and same for the design of the gate. Um, I think a fence that, I sort of feel like a fence that is kind of like others that are around is not, is not precisely restoration and it's not, it's not precisely recreation. Um, Jane, what right. material is the one at the museum? What 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 kind of wood? It is uh, cedar, and then painted. And painted it, yeah. Seems to be so holding it, up really well. But but even, it's not. It's not a modern fence. I mean, it is an actual. It down to the materials, it is a restoration or a, a recreation of something. So you could not. It's not just a a visual representation, it's a physical representation as well. Right, right. yeah, right. So to recreate a, a historic fence, you'd have to also um, align the, the materials. You couldn't use modern materials for ease of maintenance, right? Correct, I think that's correct from my understanding. Well, maybe the, um, all right, so maybe there are two, two things to think about here. One is, is there any other visual information about this fence? And second, um, is there time to you know, prepare this for this round of CPA? And a third thing is, um, I know I said there were only two, but really there are three. And uh, that would be, can it wait till next year? I would, um, you know, we can um, patch some of the pillars that are along the road, the dry ranges and keep them from falling over. And, you know, the fence is, is going to stand for another couple of years. Um, so it's, uh, there's definitely time to, you know, do more research and, and, mm -hmm. and see where this really belongs um, mm -hmm. as far as its funding sources. So. Yeah. Okay, um, so in our later discussion, I think we'll probably have to wrestle with this question about you know definitions because CPA can be pretty pretty strict in its definitions. Um, so thank you, Alan. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And. Um, so Mill River Trail. Thanks, Alan. <clears throat> Thanks, Ben.
Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, Meg. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hello. Oh, is Eric there too? I'm here. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Eric. Have you been here this whole time? Well, never mind. We'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on my lecture for tomorrow. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just going to be voices, right? You can be voices or you can turn your camera on either, um, whichever. Uh, but we are, um, so as with other, as with other applicants tonight, we're just, we're, you know, just want to know if there's something new that you'd like us to, to know that's, you know, maybe not, not included in the application itself. Cause I think we're pretty familiar with the project and now the, and now this application. Um, I, I don't think there's, uh, we're interested in answering your questions. Okay. Clearly, uh, you've seen this before, and mm -hmm. it's a much, much more modest proposal. It's really the first step of a, of a larger project. Mm -hmm. It's necessary in order to be able to do the, the larger project. And we're thrilled that we have Eric's uh, expertise yeah. uh, to lead the project. Mm -hmm. Eric, do you want to say anything? Um, I guess, um, yeah, what we're looking at is the, basically the information gathering stage of the project, which will lay the groundwork for the interpretive part of the project. Right. Okay. And, the, you know, we, I think last year we applied for, with a description of our whole larger project and it was distracting. Uh, we still have the same goal of mm -hmm. creating a his interpretive trail and engaging the community. We've identified a, a neighborhood a committee that will help us uh, monitor it. But we really need this basic information. And a lot of the, res the information is at risk of being lost. I may have told you last year that... Um, Van Kaner's mom did a huge amount of research. She's not alive anymore, but she gave it to Peace Westover and it's in big boxes in his basement. Um, and we just need to get some of that material and, and also look at the uh, historical society. And uh, so we have sort of a basis of, of what, what to build on. And, and I, I feel that these, the few remaining sites that are visible are really at risk right now. People are seeking, you saw the pictures, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, agreed. Yes, they are at risk, yeah. Um, so we're only asking for 12, you know, just literally the cost of Eric and his colleagues research next summer. Okay, okay thank you. Um, other comments, questions from commissioners? Um, I just wanted to thank Meg and Eric for all their patience and dealing with this whole process as I <laughs> threw a wrench in the works. And I think things are um, in a much better place in terms of presenting this proposal. And I want to thank Ben for all his work too. And I'm really yeah, pleased, ben, pleased to rock. have reached this point. <laughs> really Robin, thanks, thank ben. you for your patience. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for your patience while we figured it out. Well, I'm glad we've we're I'm glad we're we've reached this point. Uh, <laughs> this is a good place. So um, we were delighted that Hetty uh, and Robin went on a, a hike and saw the, some of the sites, mm -hmm. and or all of them. We did the whole uh, the whole thing, and of course Eric's done it, and uh, so yeah. And Jen, we're just I don't want to over. I don't. You're. It's getting late, and I don't want to over talk it. There's certainly a lot more that could be said, but I don't. I think yeah. you understand what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think we I, do, know, and this, I. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I. Th I think we do, and I think. Uh, you know, having sort of walked through this with you over the last year or so, um, you know, we admire what you're wanting to do, and I think. Uh, I think we have the information we need to make our recommendation. Great. And this, there's some anxiety on the part of the CPA about how many signs and 
blah, blah, blah. So we're working with the Conservation Commission and there won't be that many, you don't, you're not asking that question, so never mind. But um, we're working with the Conservation Commission as well and um, uh, trying to keep get our ducks in a row. It, so thank it, you. It is worth mentioning that in North Leverett, there is a project that is similar, Meg, to what we've been discussing with you um, in the um, Factory Hollow area and, and at Cushman. And I think there's, there's sort of, you know, given our current sort of cultural atmosphere, I think it would be a really good idea to have a conversation with Plun Baritius, who um, is heading up that Marisha. project with people um, in Leverett. Marisha? Plun Baritius. I can, I'll email oh, you. Oh, Baritius. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that they're, they're, they're doing, it's not the same as what you, mm -hmm. you are working on and what you're requesting support for, but it's similar. And, uh -huh. and I think it's, it's, it's got some of the kind of intangibles that we're trying to nail down that are similar right. to, and, and the desire to make visible and interpret and preserve things that are, are really valuable in terms of you know, America's early 19th century, New England, early 19th century. Mm -hmm. history. So it's a Thank more you. a kind of desire to cuddle up with other organizations that are doing similar things so that we, so that we're kind of know that we have colleagues in, right. can, you know, adjoining, adjoining towns actually, um, that might strengthen our, um, right. Advocacy. There's one in Acton, well, I'll get in touch with I'll, I'll reach out to you to get the contact, but yeah. there's another one in Acton that's also very similar. Great, great. And the idea of these trails, the one in Acton, it sounds like the one in North Leverett, is not just to preserve something in a box for history over here, you can't see me, but you know, uh, that nobody knows about, but to give the public an ability to appreciate it and participate and protect it. And that's what community archaeology is all about which is why we're so thrilled to be working with Eric because that's his his field yeah. and I when I was a high school teacher at Amherst U.S. history at Amherst high school I used to get these research papers about these mills and the, along the Mill River this one kid wrote one about the hat factory uh, on Summer Street and I got I've, I've sort of been in my brain ever since then the late you know the late 70s <laughs> I mean, it, that kids, the high school kids can research these things as well. Um, Meg, I have one question um, just for clarification for me. Um, this proposal, um, this current proposal does not, does or does not include the fabrication of signage? It, no. Okay. No, it's just the research and then based yeah. on that, because that's where people had a lot of questions. We don't know how many signs there'll be. Yeah. The, the fact is that between Mill River where there's the recreation park where there's the canal and the dam, there's nothing to see until you get to the Puffer's Pond area. Yeah. So I, there might not be any, and there's people just, we don't know. So the point is that we don't know how many signs or where they'll be or what they'll say. That's why we're doing this research. Yeah, I you guess. You agree, Eric? I, I think yes, the that's the number of signs, where exactly they'll be, that's all, that's all to, be to, to be determined. And we're hoping to pull together enough information to uh, help that, ha right. make that happen. And I, the I details think it, will be worked out. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, in reading, reading the application, it's, you know, it wasn't clear to me, you know, I, I knew that this was about research, but in reading some of the language in the application, the signage came up a few times and it just might be, just maybe keep in the back of your mind that that's, that the CPA committee might, yeah. That doesn't think that this is about fabricating signage. Thank you. And that's probably why they asked that question. That's really helpful, Jane. Okay, sure. Yeah. And 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 re really spot on to work with the conservation commission about about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we don't want to compromise the, the conservation value of the trail mm -hmm. by having it look like a museum or something. You know, mm -hmm. we share, and it's very fortunate this entire trail is on town property. It's amazing. We don't have to get any right of way or anything. Uh, but yeah. we, we're very committed to maintaining the conservation aspects of the trail as uh, we're trying to add. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, one of the questions, for example, might be whether there'd be signage on Summer Street or anywhere else, or would there just be more like a website where people could go and read, read about where things were? Meg, if I can just interject, I would just say, um, as you present, don't even talk about signage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, like, this is a fact-finding mission. It fits probably under the administration portion of CPA. We're excited about it, and we're going to leave the sign. If so, anybody brings up signage, just say it's not part of this proposal. Yeah, okay. Well, they yeah. already brought it up, so that's okay. okay. All right, yeah. Yeah, they, asked four, today, they asked four questions. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Meg. This has been yeah. um yeah, yeah and Eric too. Eric is it. you're gonna enjoy Eric. <laughs> Jane knows him well. He's a treasure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's a absolutely. he's a treasure. And we're so lucky that we have uh him willing and another his colleague participating because he really understands that this is in the end. A community project as well as a history project. Okay, well, thanks to you both. I think we're going to need to move on to okay. uh, Thank you, lining everybody. up our duck. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We, we're going to leave now, right? Bye. Yep. Okay, well, now we have a lot of information. Um, I especially want to thank Ben for putting putting this list of funding request percentages and then what's how much money is in the whole CPA pot mm -hmm. this year because um, this is going to be a big help to us. Um, um, so well, we didn't talk about West Cemetery, but we've talked about it so much before. We know it's our top priority. So, um, so um, why don't we, I mean, maybe it's best first to prioritize these projects and then to talk about, you know, what kind of, are there any amendments to the amounts that, mm -hmm. that we want to um, recommend to CPA? So, floor is open to priorities. Well, both the houses have things that are more and less crucial. Yeah, but both mm -hmm. the houses are also the two projects that are the most crucial. Mm -hmm. They both, I mean, I think portions of both of them should be, I, I would try them for first place. Yeah, I would too, and I would suggest that we Talking to the people at Conkey Stevens, it's clear they need at least 120. If we were to split their 352 and assume we, they could get the second half next year, it'd be 176. And um, the yeah. Hills House, they were talking mostly about the Southwest porch, um, not needing everything right away as well. So we could also split that down a little and then ask for all four of these with just a, a a ranking that maybe we say these even though these are ranked they're all number ones mm -hmm. well, Wait, so however it, it seems that um, west cemetery is not a priority for this year can we just start there needs the to be question? some historic investigation yeah. um hang on just a second i uh I think let's go let's go to raising hands because um, this is going to be hard to do without that. Um, and I, I I would like to separate the dollar amounts from the priorities. So if we can if we can rank order these, then 
we'll go back to them by okay. lowest amount and working up. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. First, um, let's see. Let me go back to Pat and then Becky and Jan and Robin in that order. So Pat, would you? When, when I was suggesting was that when we spoke with the Conkey Stevens House, we helped them, I believe, prioritize the order in which the repairs needed to be done mm -hmm. related, related to staging for the chimneys, the roof, the flashing, other things, but that that the other things they're asking for could be placed in a second year request, and the same seemed to be the same for the um, um, house. Alice Maud Hills House. That there were there were uh, uh, groupings of repairs that were immediately needed, but others that could be um, deferred. Okay. And, and, and so from those conversations, we ought to be able to recommend an amount for the, the current CPA funds. Um, the Amherst Historical Society is a little, um, in my opinion, uh, not clear um, because we don't have a, a, a bid or a price or, or anything for us to go on. But I think, Jane, you particularly were helpful to them in understanding they needed an architect and perhaps a structural engineer. And so they will attend to that. Um, the North Cemetery, I think it, it, it needs you know doesn't need to be in this year's um, recommendation because there needs to be some historic study and and we were told that it it could last a couple of years before it was necessary to replace the fence um, the mill river trail seems reasonable to to support at this point because we've worked with them over a year um, and the West Cemetery, I haven't formed an opinion on. Okay, thank you. Um, Becky? Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with everything Pat said. So as a newbie though, the one question that I do have is how can we make a decision? I know that the strong house needs lots of care and it's an important, important resource. And I really appreciate that, that the, the board is beginning to, you know, really look at that. But how can we make a decision when we have no amount? I guess that's my newbie question. What do we usually do if that happens? Well, I'll let, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's an, uh, an unqualified proposal. It cannot, okay. it cannot be acted on okay. from my okay. point of view. Yeah. Um, let's see, Jan. I had crossed off the strong and the North cemetery because it seemed from our discussion, neither one of them was appropriate. And that's why I had the four left. Mm -hmm. And I thought if we simply came up with an amount for the two houses and left them in the same order, that's why I was saying they'd just be the way they stand one, two, three, four, um, because yeah. The Conky Stevens needs so much, and it will be the higher amount. And I think we should, you know, really support that that they get at least the first year. Um, and I and I think they they kind of fall into that priority level for me. So then just, it's just a matter of coming up with the amounts. Okay, just just as they appear in the order in which they, they appear. appear. Okay. Stevens, uh -huh. Hills, Mill yeah. River, West Cemetery. Um, Robin. So, um, yep, I'm in agreement that the North Cemetery and the Strong House are not eligible. Um, my, uh, and, and I would concur with everything that Jan just said with 
um, the note that both for the Conkey Stevens and the Alice Mount Hills House, um, that if we're going to carve their number down, it should be with enough room for them to finish whatever, there should be a contingency amount padded on to the end. And just to remind everybody and particularly the newbies on um, the uh, uh, commission um, that the award is made, but the funds are granted in a, a reimbursement, right? Is that right, Ben? That people don't get, they don't get a check for the award. They submit, uh, they pay for things and they submit uh, for reimbursement of costs. So if you award somebody $250,000 and it only costs $200,000, they only get 200. So it's okay to go a little bit over because in the event that the project comes in under budget, those funds will just re be returned to the CPA pot. So no worries there. Um, the West Cemetery, I will confess, I did not look closely at the application, but in all our discussion about the North Cemetery, I'm curious um, whether we have an opinion on signage and what makes this fence right. different. different. <laughs> um, let's. Okay, let's yeah. hold on, hang on to that question, and okay. um, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask Catherine. What? Yeah. Hi. Yes. No. I I had put my hand up earlier, and I I don't know if you had um, been able to see it, but what I had wanted to begin saying was that I thought that the strong house in the North Cemetery would be ineligible, which we've all decided is true, um, and I and I actually completely agree with what both Robin and Jan have said about the order um, going down, that basically I was thinking about the two houses as being the most important thing. And then essentially the way that they're listed on here is my you know, just sort of descending order of things. Um, I have a little bit of a concern about how best to you know, divide up the projects for both houses, including something from our previous meeting about the Hills House, which that I don't think that they had factored in the need in their original estimate to have up scaffolding that would need to be up. And so I, I to do all of the projects, and I just want to make sure that when we um, decide what we would recommend, that we're also just being cognizant of finding a number that helps them do all of those projects, but also taking into consideration that they need scaffolding to be able to, to do it. OK, OK, thank you. Yeah. Um, Let's see, Robin, you have your hand up again. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, I mean, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Like the Mill River Trail is, it's almost like we have three, in my, my opinion, like three number one uh, priorities. And I'd rather see less, a little bit less money going to the two houses, you know, to compensate for that twelve thousand um, dollars. I don't want to see the Mill River Trail not get funded. I, I don't think it right. will be, but um, I just wanted to to make that point. I think it will be fine. And usually, in my experience of the three years that I was on the the committee, what will happen is um, the smaller projects will can can generally get reviewed quicker, and you know, they're sort of they're sort of easier sells because they don't have such of a big impact, but. Um, Catherine again, and then Becky. I think that was a mistake. I didn't lower my hand. Oh, okay. Becky. Thank you, though. <laughs> um, I, I, it sounds like you all have talked about the West Cemetery before. Um, and and I, I'm not sure what you spoke about. But what I'm reading, and maybe I'm wrong, is that it's repair of a chain link fence. And that doesn't seem to me to be um, anything historic. Um, this is a very old cemetery and certainly they didn't have chain link fences back in the day. Um, so I, I don't exactly understand how this would fit with the CPI, if someone could help me with that. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. I'm actually just realizing I'm on the CPA website now. They didn't include two of the attachments I uploaded for the project, which probably would help explain the project a lot better. But um, 
it's uh, and I'm going to email those to CPA right now. But um, it's it's not it's not uh, replacing the chain link fence. It's it's removing the chain link fence and uh, constructing constructing a historically appropriate fence to match the black yeah. um, okay. the black okay. iron uh, picket fence that lines the entire rest of the cemetery. Um, and uh, to I think Robin's question or someone else's question, um, we have I don't have images from you know going back to the 1800s obviously, but there is descriptions of the fence um, in West Cemetery from the preservation plan, and it does describe it as like a metal um, picket fence, and I think that's what the picket fence in uh, this was constructed in the early 2000s that's what that was based off of so we would be kind of finishing the job that was done in the early 2000s to in enclose fully enclose west cemetery in a, in a black picket fence that's historically appropriate yeah jan okay i was just going to try and move things along by proposing that we give half of the request to both of the houses and all of the other two, which would bring us to 321, 321,000. And um, if, if 500 to 550, as Ben says, is more likely what we might get for our portion of the total CPA budget, then I would up the Conkey Stevens to two from 176. It would be 176 for them, 83 for Hills the 12 and the 50, actually 12, nine, I guess it would be 321, nine. Um, if we should ask more to, in order to get closer to the max so we don't lose any, um, then I would, you know, I'd put another 24,000 on it for the um, Conkey Stevens because they essentially need 120. And then if we give them a buffer or they could do a few more things and just to help for the second request next year. Um, but that would bring us around 350, which seems reasonable to me. Um, I think that's an interesting breakdown. I, um, because we may have, you know, we may have 500,000, um, I might be interested in giving Conkey Stevens enough to do the phase one and the phase two. Um, and then I'd want to look back at the Hills house um, to see how they, how their prior how their internal priorities, you know, whether we can give them a, you know, a, a priority one and a priority two. Um, it seemed that their primary concerns were from for porch uh, stabilization and some repairs, and then it's about a hundred thousand just for the painting. So that's why I was thinking that if we give them, you know, over the sixty-six difference, they'll get up to being ready to paint. That's kind of what my thinking was, and then do all the painting at once in a second um, year. But you know, hmm. that that has a good logic to it, I think. I mean, the other thing is that, you know, a larger, we can always recommend a larger amount. The CPA committee itself can reduce the amount, but, right. yeah. you know, we don't have to necessarily err on the side of super caution. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what do you think of, um, well, let me get their, let me get their budget back up. Um, the Conkey Stevens house trying to get them through two phases. So let's look at those phases again. Yeah. I mean, if we break those two out and we give Hetty the information to take to CPA, she can always argue for the two. And if she needs to dial back to the one, she can dial back to the one. But it's good to have those two figures in line. I'd say mm -hmm. the same thing for the Hills house. Mm -hmm. And so what are the figures for both houses, for phase one and phase two? For Conkey Stevens, phase one is 120. 20, yeah. And let's see. I think 
phase. It was phase two, like mostly the porch. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. It was, yeah. it was like 240, 40, 241, yeah. I think. I think altogether it came to, it, when I, I did some math as well, it was like 359 something and change. I think it's also right. Fascia boards, um, water damage. I mean, oh, I, it, that's it, everything they're asking for. We're just back to their full amount. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. Well, wait a we minute. Are. I do. I don't think so. I think because their yeah. full amount included, you know, the the fence, the furnace, the granite steps, the right. uh, so less the fence. Painting. Yeah, yeah, but less the fence, less the furnace less the painting mm -hmm. if we back those out what would that be well um we've got door window door trim on the window dormers replacement windows porch ceiling um but so it wasn't clear to me that the i thought that the priority for the dormers was the flashing and the roofing and not so right. much the windows themselves. I did too. So if we back out the window. Yeah, but if they're, if we're going to do everything while they have the, um, the staging, staging up, then right. that's what we'd want to do the dormers, right? So well, they what, they themselves said that was further out. Yeah, but but what if we included everything with the staging? Because that's that's a significant cost in itself. Mm -hmm. Well, then you would add um, 120 to the 120 that they already had, which would give us 240. And and what about the roof flashing, et cetera? That's all part of the first 120. Okay, so so what if we did 240 then? What would, would that allow them to do? Everything except exterior painting, granite steps, furnace, and shutters. Oh, and porch ceiling and, and fascia. Okay, so they backed out the furnace to their HOA already. They agreed yeah. to that. Yeah, um, but it, in terms of the numbers that are on here, it's still there. The total. Right. But yeah. if they had 240, they could make a significant improvement. Yeah, they'd be a long ways towards their, their goal. Right. I think the um the, the most important part too is to make sure that they understand what that 240 can be spent on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they're pretty they're pretty savvy about what they need. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that when I, and that the you know that the the CPEC understands that it's you know that we're just in the same way that we did it with the Jones. So you know we we're, we're we clearly delimiting because when we change the numbers. We just want to have a we need to we need to specify what, what yeah. we're recommending and what would be the next phase which would be the fence and the porch so can we um mm. i i feel like we're, we're i feel like we're not on firm ground here with what mm -hmm. we understand their right. first second and third right. priorities to be um I think it might be helpful for us if we say, you know, we'd like we'd like to cover priorities one and two. Can you clearly identify for us what that is? Um, you know, we can go up to so we can go up to two fifty or two two forty or two fifty. But let's also remember that they're doing an assessment. Um, of $71,000. So that's in addition to whatever we provide to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So minus the first. <laughs> minus, right, minus the first. So the plaque. <laughs> yeah, and the plaque. <laughs> so do you think it would it be okay to kind of agree in principle and then confirm with them? Yeah, I mean, and you could tell them our thinking that we're putting in everything that we think should be done with that initial staging. Right, 
right? Yeah, and if you so, confirm them and we get a email from Ben, you know, just laying it out, then if any of us has, you know, the in the unlikely event that any of us had an issue with it, right, we could call another meeting, which we won't do, but we could do, right? That would be the way to handle it tonight, I guess is what I'm trying to suggest. Yeah. So that so if, if we're specific about what we're backing out for this year, would be the fence, the furnace, which they will take responsibility for, and what else? I think that's the easiest way to be specific. We're, we're, we're gonna ask them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I and think that information will be conveyed to us. Yeah. And then on the Hills House, really the things that they say are crucial are much less than half the price, but I still think we could give them half mm. um, and figure they could get the rest next year. Um, or we could just take out the paint, the painting quote, which is 100,625. 100, well, the carriage house is another 19,5. I mean, Really, half of it would cover most of the work they need to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we could add a buffer to that. I would feel comfortable with that. I mean, we give them a hundred of this hundred and sixty-six. Mm. Say that that makes sense. Is there a reason paint is painting not eligible, or is it? You no, just think I'm it's just, a second phase. It's just, yeah, I think it's a second phase from what they've discussed, what they talk about as their crucial issues on their application. They just I say the house has not been painted about 20 years is showing signs of wear and tear and other damage. I mean, it doesn't, but they said the Southwest porch roof and the porch repairs are urgent, do rot and leakage. Mm -hmm. So uh, the painting sounds less important in their application. So no. if you take Southwest porch and column, Northeast porch repair, um southeast corner of house repairs north wall repairs and second floor roof repair and take out all the painting uh it's actually not very much so i'd like to make a case for painting um mm -hmm. so we're focusing on things that are rotten mm -hmm. um painting protects all the other fabric from rotting. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. it would, you know, and I don't think our goal is to be parsimonious. I think our goal is to advance preservation. And so I would, <laughs> I think it would be a big mistake to take out painting because that could lead to further deterioration of the fabric and bigger problems later on. And not much very later on because a 20 year paint <laughs> job on a historic house is that's a, that's that's already at risk. Mm. So and that's, Jane, that's why we well, love having you here, Jane. <laughs> uh, following <laughs> up on that, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And and this is also a, a, a nonprofit property that's being preserved. No, it's um, not nonprofit. Mm -mm. I don't believe yeah. it is. It, it is a not oh. not for profit status, I believe. The women's club. No, we're talking about the other house. No, no, we're talking, we're about, talking about the Amherst oh. Women's Club, the Hills House. Yeah, the Hills House is the Women's Club. Yeah. Right. Moved up so the I, I would, given given the discussion, I would say to grant the full amount mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and get it done and preserve it. Well, and because I, because I, it's, it's a not for profit and it's and it is indeed a historic house where where the Salem Place House um the fe the fence is non-consequential to the restoration and maintenance of the property it's consequential to the historic value of the property but it's not consequential to preservation it, <laughs> preservation it of the urgent. fence yes it, it's not urgent it's not right. urgent. it is actually a preservation matter but it's not urgent for this round of it time. is a preservation matter but it's not urgent where the amherst women's club it is a significant historic property and what they're telling us is that in order to preserve it this is essential well if we put 240 towards the conky stevens 
the total amount of the Maud Hills house and the other two, we come to 511.8, which falls right within what Ben was saying would be approximately mm -hmm. how much would get funded. So, so on the screen, it says 468.9. Yeah, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. So I yep. I I'm inclined to go with this thinking. I think that that's really great, Pat. I when I first was looking at this, like I thought we had a significantly less amount of money for some reason. And if we have up to five hundred thousand dollars, I agree with Jane. I agree with you on this. I think we should give the full amount to the Amherst Women's Club. I do too. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will say, um, <clears throat> and I think maybe Robin can sp speak to this better too. Like I, I based that five hundred thousand number off of that the CPA committee deciding to split the total one point five million equally amongst historic preservation, housing, and recreation. So that's not always the case, but I think that's generally a guiding principle for them. And so that's kind of how I came. Came up with the that. other two. The other two groups may not have as much, or may yeah, not. Have they, they, yeah, I can but say they, they, they definitely do. No, so <laughs> yeah. they do. Yeah, well, they the do. Most, yeah. the but most I, important I, thing for everybody to understand that this is a two-stage process, yeah. and that mm -hmm. we aim high. Yeah. But we aim high within the bounds of what is both urgent and also what is what meets the standards of preservation. So I think this looks really good to bring to the committee. And then we just have to, and I will help, you know, Hetty be prepared to, you know, have to reduce one of those figures. That's the really important thing. Now that we've prioritized and we agree on the preservation goals and we agree that it meet all, meets all the standards, what happens if she gets there? And, you know, there's what, how, I don't know, seven other people there who don't want to give $240,000 to this coffee students house then that's when she's going to want to know well you know we can't go lower than 120 or whatever you know like to understand the, the staging piece and to understand that number will help a lot and the same thing with the hills house because i mean jane your point about painting is a really good one i don't quite know how to split the hair on that but the question is you know does a hundred thousand dollars worth of painting need to happen um so if if there's pressure at the CPAC meeting to reduce these numbers. We just need to know how. 12, the M Mills River is, went from $40,000 to 12.9. That's not getting any lower. I don't think the West Cemetery is getting any lower. So it's just knowing how to, how to argue for and be able to negotiate on those two big house projects. I don't and really, really to be able to, I mean, it's pretty clear to stress the urgency of these particular repairs. They're clearly both, incredibly time sensitive. So I, I just have one question and not to divert um, because I've been on the tours of the West Cemetery, I understand the construction that's going on and we <clears throat> wanna preserve the boundary of the West Cemetery, but is there any chance that the developers would contribute something toward the replacement of the fence? Um, it's on, so, so the developments on the other side of where the chain link fence is going to be replaced but they Oof. the developer will help with the uh, relocation of the fence to align with the property line that, that was part of the conversation we but, had. but not the cost of the fence itself no because yeah it's on the other side of the cemetery so what yeah. we're looking at here is the cost of the fence and the signage but it's mm -hmm. not the fence where the development's occurring it's against the parking lot where there's an existing building the fence where the development's occurring is different, and that is being covered. Separately. Covered. Okay. All right. Got it. And, and so Ben is. I mean, we didn't really address the question of how urgent the West Cemetery fence is. I mean, does it? If somebody said at CPAC, well, you know, you got to cut fifty thousand dollars from it, would we say, well, you know, we can roll this one into next year or not? Um, I think there's certainly a lot of. Uh, yeah, just wear and tear on that fence and it's starting to, you know, there's vegetation starting to, you know, move, grow in and out of it. It's, it's might take itself out pretty soon. We'll see. But, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's similar maybe to the North C Cemetery fence where it's like, 
it's just year after year, it's reached its useful life and year after year, just one year closer to, um, you know, being dangerous, falling over, you know, not just failing altogether. So, you know, if it, if it waits another year, will it, will there still be a chain link fence there? Yes, I think so. But I think it's been one of those projects that's just been kicked down the road year after year. So Thank you. Petty and Robin, if, if we came, if push came to shove, that we had to reduce our recommendation, could that cease to be a priority for this year, Ben? Um, uh, if it came to that, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, and I think you guys have indicated that in, in the ranking that it's, you know, lo lowest here. Well, and it's, it, it needs uh, to be done, no yeah. question. But but I'm just saying, you know, if 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 the analysis of what funding we would recommend gets lowered, then where do we go from there? I, I think I don't, I personally wouldn't want to lower the Conkey Stevens house or right. the Hills house. Um, and I think the Mill River Trail deserves to be funded. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we, the only place to go would be whether to um, put, put that in another year. Mm -hmm. But let's keep at least the 11.5 for the signs out of that budget. Sure. Oh, I think we should make the recommendation. I'm just talking about, yeah. you know, what's but I mean, if, there. if there's a meeting that's nailing Hetty on this and saying right. you've got to cut your fourth priority down and say, okay, we have to keep the 11.5 for the signs and we'll push the fence to next year. So let me ask a question about the fence. Um, we were pretty. Um, uh, explicit about the North Cemetery fence. Uh, what yes. about the West Cemetery fence is preservation or restoration? I think mm -hmm. Ben answered before that it was historically appropriate. And I would be inclined on a flat out vote to vote against it because it's, I don't think it, and, and we still don't have an answer on the question of whether signage is funded. So I, um, I'd, I'd opt out of weighing in on that question. Um, but but are you yeah. talking about preserving the cemetery, not necessarily preserving the, that the fence is accurate, but that the historic cemetery is being preserved by the fence? Correct. Well, then that's a different argument then. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. I mean, the North Cemetery, it clearly isn't necessary to preserve that cemetery. It's just decorative along the street. But here, right. You know, that's a whole different function for the fence. Well, then it would be. There we go. That's good. Right. That, well, that's how, do a, feel, how do you feel about that, Jane? I think that's a tough one. Um, that I think that would take, you know, going into the ins and outs of the CPA bylaw. And, um, you know, that, that becomes a definitions question again. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, you know, we, we rejected, or I rejected, the historically appropriate argument for North Cemetery. Um, but if we're talking about protecting the cemetery itself, you know, that is that restoration? Is that um, maintenance? Is it security? Uh, they could come back well, and I mean, found it's responsibility. Right. But if we're if we're arguing about protecting, if we're arguing about protecting the the cemetery itself, then I would say that uh, it doesn't have to be historically appropriate. I mean, it could be the cheapest fence that would protect the cemetery. I think that might be where I go with that. It's a tough one. I'm. It's it's a tough one, and I would leave it in. But Hetty, if push comes to shove and our number gets reduced, I think this is something that could be put into another year to be proposed and, again. And I just wanted to say, Ben, you know, I know you haven't gotten an answer from our, our legal counsel either, but I always feel like instead of us bouncing around with these definitions, I feel like once we come up with struggling with one of them, 
the lawyer is really the one that if there was an issue with it, they'd be the one to argue the case for or against it. So I know that I don't want to lean too heavily on them, but it seems like when we get to a point like this, we're just, we ask the lawyer's opinion. If they say it's fine, right. then we can say it's fine. Right. Okay. Hetty. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very unsure of, of my ground here. I'm really new to this. Um, this is granular to a point where I'm not sure I'm going to be the best advocate for, for, our position. <laughs> um, I think there are a lot of things that are contingent at this point. Um, and I still don't feel like I've, I mean, here I'm going to go, you know, where angels fear to tread and say, well, why are these two town properties not being funded through town funds? I, I, I know that's a, maybe that's a really dumb question or I'm just really tired, but I, <sighs> Why, why are we talking about um, this in relation to CPA funding? That is a perennial question. Uh, you know, one of my biggest problems with this is, you know, is CPA a, a piggy bank for the town? Uh, well, the, one of the main things that, you know, I uncovered in the guidance is this question of definition of maintenance. So there's a definition of maintenance. There's a definition of what um, preservation is. Some preservation is obvious. The two houses are obvious preservation. And this is gets trickier because it's like, okay, well, you're doing to some, something to something historic to make it better. Ergo, it's historic preservation. And that's where I think it's really doesn't serve us well to argue it amongst ourselves when the town retains counsel to deal with these questions. So if we get to a point where we can't decide, the question of maintenance is a different one. And if we feel like the town is using the CPA funds to maintain something as opposed to have a real preservation project on its hands, then that, that's a different question. But I don't know, know that that's the case here because that I, you know, I'm lost on this one. I mean, my, my instinct is to vote against it um, on the basis of definition, but I, I would, my instinct is also to say, you know, maybe a lawyer, the lawyer could tell us whether it's just an easier answer. If they say no, then we don't have to weigh in on it and spend all this time mm -hmm. you know, wringing our hands over what everything means because we're not the lawyers. I also think that the two historic houses um, are interesting examples where one, one aspect of phase one, you know, leads to the phase two and, and you know, it, it's almost like we're sort of up against a wall in having to really go for the larger amounts of money rather than being able to fund it, you know, sequentially in terms of this is the roof, this is the flashing, this is the fascia boards, you know, it, and, you know, I, I, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just whining, <laughs> you know, for something but I, that, but I um, think that's, that's an, that's kind of an expensive way to fund something is exactly divide yeah. it up. Yeah. That doesn't make economic sense. I really. mean, I, 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 I was great. at a museum where we had to pay over $200 for a roof on a Frank Lloyd Wright house. And, you know, I was the tail wagging the dog in the museum. And, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think I think it, that it's late, yes. <laughs> and I think what, that what we've come to is you know we we if if it wasn't a question of you know limited funds we've come to where with the question of the the cemetery funds we've come to where we uh, are in support of dollar amounts and then the next step is just to see what happens at the CPAC meeting, Hetty, and you make your arguments, you okay. know, as as and you 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 pitch that against, you know, another $400,000 project. I haven't looked at the other, I'm just throwing that out there. I haven't looked at the other proposals, but for something else that can wait. And the, the strongest argument here is that these two houses can't wait. And this they is really what this and, and I, I apologize if I open the Pandora's box about West Cemetery, but if anything has to go in this funding round, that's where I started. So can we decide that we will ask the lawyers about the cemetery and let the lawyers guide us? 
We right. will go back to Conky Stevens and ask them for their highest priorities in terms of the funds that we're offering. And right. if if the lawyers say the West Cemetery project does not qualify, then let's add that money onto the Conky Stevens and give them more uh, instead of absolutely forty, give them three hundred, and just. And just know from tonight what we're going to do. And can we just make that decision now? Because I need to get off this call. I've been on this right. all day. You and know I, what? I, yeah, I agree. I absolutely that agree. That sounds like a motion. Um, I that. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Oh, it's seconded, by the way. Second. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the second. Okay. Um, uh, is there anything you want to talk about with uh, the Rogers Walk, Ben? <laughs> yeah, um, that sounds good. I guess I, I oh, maybe I'll I will say maybe I'll follow up with Jane after this meeting because I'm a little bit confused of what's wrong with the West Cemetery um, uh, proposal, and I know it's it's a lower priority than others. But I think at our last meeting we did talk about how the historical commission that was like the proposal that you guys were putting forth. So um, I understand maybe it wasn't conveyed clearly maybe like what the exact proposal was but um i think maybe i just need some clarification on uh if it gets to that point and if and if it's questioned kind of what what exactly needs to change about it um but otherwise yeah i'll talk to jane about that and anyone else um but otherwise for the writer's walk event um it's in two days so it's on friday the 22nd um at 4 30 and obviously everyone is welcome to uh, attend um it's outside of 97 spring street which is like the five college consortium building it happens to be that's where the garris house is and uh, the top mabel Lo loomis todd house is across okay. the street so it's kind of like a nice meeting area because there's two two signs right there and um, the program is pretty basic at this point. We're just going to have uh, the town manager, town council, president say a few words. I can be kind of like the MC for the event. Um, and I've been, um, and then I think Jonathan Tucker, who some of you may know, the former planning director for the town and Amherst history buff is going to say a few words as well about the origins of the project. Um, and then, uh, I think I'd offer Jan um, and, and or Jan the opportunity to 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 talk if they'd like, but I, I also want to be mindful of people's time. But I think the uh, the two two other things we we're thinking of doing is like I think I wanted there to be some sort of like celebratory moment. It's not quite like a ribbon cutting. It's not like groundbreaking. So I wasn't sure like what are we gonna do. But I was I was talking with some folks in town hall about maybe just having like an unveiling. So like cover one of the signs in like a literally <laughs> probably a tablecloth or something and then having like a celebratory woohoo, like unveiling <laughs> of the sign. Um, and and you then you like the woo, huh? <laughs> yeah, everyone has to go woohoo. <laughs> and, uh, and then I think we would open it up to an optional uh, tour if people, you know, folks would be free to leave at that point, but we could then walk. Uh, I was thinking up Spring Street to the inn on Boltwood where there's another sign and then over to uh, Main Street mm -hmm. where there's the Webster sign and then up to Amherst Books where there's a window display um, is my understanding they're working on a window display for some of the authors and then yeah. at that point mm -hmm. um, just kind of disperse <laughs> from there so the only um, thing I would say Ben is I'm happy to forego saying anything um, as long as we really make it clear and I know I emailed you this that yeah. George and Jonathan are kept <laughs> to a minimum because people will be standing there for hours. Yeah. Both of them go on and on and on. And it's okay. just it'll ruin the whole event if everybody gets bored and you know is like yeah. tired of yeah. standing. No, I, I totally agree. Jonathan said he'll keep it short, uh, even by, by his standards. So. And George too, well, yeah. his standards, yeah. Um, so maybe Jen, you should go first. I'm not speaking, I'm not in this. Oh, uh, okay. You didn't put me on the list and that's fine. I'm happy to forego and let Jonathan talk. I just don't want them going on and on and on. If they're going to, then take them off and I'll say something for two minutes, you know? <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not about them and their knowledge and no, whatever. No. It's just 
letting the town know that we've got this now, you know. I think it might be really good to check in and see who we have there. Um, that's when I gave tours, you know, check in and see who your audience is. And, and uh, you know, we, we need to know who's going to show up and be interested. And, um, you know, I, I hope there's yeah. an opportunity to do that. Find out why people are there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I have to get off this call. I, I, I actually have a really important yeah. thing to do um, tonight to do with my job and I need to, to leave. So um good night, Hetty. Good night, Hetty. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, Thanks so much, everybody. Before we so, adjourn, I see Becky's hand. Okay. Becky Sanders. Yeah, I just did. Yeah. Okay. Um just a quick question. For for further agenda, and you may have already talked about this in the past. Um, I've spent a lot of time at the West Cemetery uh, on various different days, and it is in great need of care, as we all know. And I guess I'd like to talk about how we can make that happen down the it, road, it um, is not about, tonight. You're talking about the headstones? We've been uh, having that, headstones yes. prepared, and we're working on more each year. Yeah, good. So okay. I think and that, mowing, and is, I mean, it's just, yeah. At this point, so, but um, not tonight. Well, yeah. <laughs> at this point, let's just formally adjourn. And if anyone wants to stick yes. around and talk about West Cemetery, we can do that. I move we okay. adjourn. I, I second. second. I second. <laughs> All right.